Hello and welcome to this film about the effect of noble gases on the equilibrium systems. Um, there's no practical film about this, um, so this is the first of two films about this. It's being made on a very, very wet day outside, so hopefully the, uh, the noise of the rain won't be too severe on the recording. But um, we're going to look at um, noble gas additions to equilibrium systems and why it's so important that we consider the volume and the pressure of the system when we make these additions, okay? So we're going to use Le Chatelier's principle to see how the noble gas might affect our system and we're also going to try and call on collision theory to try and explain ourselves. Okay, so again, we're not going to look at any graphs here, that's going to be the next film, but it's just the principles that are involved and we're going to start off by looking at a system um, into which we insert some noble gas, but we're going to do this at constant volume. So let's say my reaction system is A turning into B, an old favourite, okay, and that this reaction is happening in some uh, sealed container. Sealed apart from the fact that I can, ins uh, I've got some kind of valve which allows me to uh, inject noble gases, neon perhaps. Now, the thing about noble gases is they're not going to react with the things inside the box, okay? Um, but clearly, if I've got um, this box here and it's got some A's in it and it's got some B's in it that are reacting together in both the forward and backward directions, if I start injecting more gas into here, then the pressure is going to increase. Okay, so my adding this noble gas will cause an increase in the pressure. Okay, now remember, what we're thinking, according to Le Chatelier up to this stage, is that if we increase the pressure, then the system will try and lower it. But, let's think about whether, or why that happens. Okay, now, if we think about these two reactions that are going on here, if I inject a noble gas into here, yes, the pressure's increased, but the number of these reacting particles that are in the box, okay, although there's these now there's these noble gas particles floating around in there, the number of particles that are in the box that can actually react with one another or collide and lead to a reaction hasn't changed. So the collision theory would say that the chances of a successful collision haven't changed, and so the rate of these two reactions can't possibly change. Okay? Now if the rate of these two reactions can't change, then this equilibrium isn't going to shift. Okay? So in other words, if I add noble gases at constant volume, they don't affect equilibrium systems because they don't affect the actual number of particles that react per unit volume. Okay? So although we've inserted these other particles, and some people think, well, they'll get in the way, won't they? Well, yes, they would, if it wasn't for the fact that the distances between these particles are enormous. So this diagram isn't really to scale. Okay? So I suppose the punchline there is that if you add a noble gas at constant volume, it's not going to affect your equilibrium. Okay, let's move on to what happens at constant pressure. Now, in this case, I'm going to have to deal with a slightly more complex equilibrium system. I'm going to really ramp up the difficulty and make it A turning into 2B. Okay, so and again this reaction is happening in some kind of container but this time let's make it a container that can change in size as I add my noble gas through the little valve. Okay, and uh, just for the sake of variety let's make this noble gas argon this time. Okay. So this is kind of a syringe type container. And as I add argon into here, um, and I've got my A particles and my B particles in there that can react together, as I insert argon, if the pressure's not being allowed to change, then this plunger must rise, okay? So let's say it rises to this level here, okay? Now what's happened? Well, as far as the reacting species are concerned, right, Although the pressure overall hasn't changed, the pressure that they're exerting in the box has changed. Okay? There's now the same number of particles in the box, but the box has got bigger, so their concentrations have fallen. Now, what does Le Chatelier uh, say will happen in this sort of instance? Well, if the pressure of our 
reactants or our reacting species rather has fallen then the system will try and move to increase their pressure how does this system do that well this side of our equation has got two moles of gas but this one only had one okay so as I add this noble gas the concentration of A and B falls so the overall concentration or the overall pressure of the reacting things falls so Le Chatelier's principle says that they will increase and they'll do that by moving to the right okay why will that happen in terms of rates well let's think about this if the pressures dropped there's fewer particles per unit volume so both these rates will fall but if the forward one is being favored then it will fall by less than the backward one okay now the next film is gonna deal with these changes being displayed on graphs okay um, but hopefully that's all the principles covered and you understand that okay um, if you're not sure about anything please make sure you ask a question preferably before you move on to watching other films